She was our greatest ever monarch. She was a constant in all of our lives. She was the most famous woman in the world, a religious leader, a beacon of morality, a true modernizer. But she was also a devoted wife, a beloved mum, a grandmother, a great grandmother. And like so many of you, I felt a personal connection to the Queen. She represented the greatest generation, like my grandparents who fought in World War II. She represented the sort of selflessness that we don't see in public figures anymore. Truly the best of British. And no matter her personal trauma, she put duty first, always. Be it serving in the Auxiliary Territorial Service in 1945 to help protect Britain from the Nazis. Or be it sitting at the funeral of her strength and stay Prince Philip completely alone, a 94-year-old elderly woman in her darkest moment of grief. And she did that because she had to set an example to her people that showed she wasn't above them. Just two days ago, having not been seen in public for 53 days, she continued that duty, understanding that she must literally leave her deathbed to see her 15th prime minister come to office. To me, she looked how we will always remember her. Kind, calm, modest and dutiful. This is the moment we hoped would never happen. As you know, because I've been saying it for many weeks, I believe the Queen would live for decades longer because imagining a Britain without her, well, it's just unfathomable to me. At every major historic event in all of our lifetime, she has been there providing emotional comfort and support in the way only the nation's grandmother could. I don't know about you, but the grief I'm feeling tonight is raw and real. And I know even the Republicans amongst us understand why. Because these are dark days for Britain, a country divided and facing the most difficult winter politically in decades. And the Queen, well, she was our constant through these times. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and to the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. What I say to you now as your queen and as a grandmother, I say from my heart. First, I want to pay tribute to Diana myself. She was an exceptional and gifted human being. In good times and bad, she never lost her capacity to smile and laugh nor to inspire others with her warmth and kindness. I admired and respected her for her energy and commitment to others, and especially for her devotion to her two boys. I hope that tomorrow we can all, wherever we are, join in expressing our grief at Diana's loss and gratitude for her all too short life. We will succeed, and that success will belong to every one of us. We should take comfort that while we may have more still to endure, better days will return. We will be with our friends again. We will be with our families again. We will meet again. And we will meet again, Your Majesty, one day. The Queen is like no other historical figure. Her impact will not be repeated in our lifetimes, perhaps never again. She will go down in history as a transformational monarch who secured the future of the royal family by guiding it through the very difficult transition from the British Empire to the Commonwealth. The next few days are going to be hard for this United Kingdom, but we will stick together through these days of grief and get through this tumult stronger as Britons, because that's what she would have wanted. God bless you, Mum.